Uh, Dilo, do you want to go first and show us your lathe? Where are you? Okay, sure, sure. Just highlight me. I'm going to spotlight you for everybody. Okay. Share screen. Share. Can you? Uh, we see your screen. We don't see your slides yet. There we go. Can you now make that full screen? Have you got a button? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. How's that? Looks That's good. Thanks. There we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, I, I did show a, a picture back in May of uh, this machine from the uh, distributor website. Um, but now I've got it in the shop and I've uh, uh, had about six weeks to turn on this. And uh, I, I don't know, I've done at least 20 different pieces uh, on the lathe. So I got a little, little uh, uh, experience with it and just wanted to uh, share some of it uh of why i'm so tickled pink and every other color about uh, the decision to uh, get this particular machine okay um not that it's any better uh than any other machine but uh it, it just suits me well uh because of my uh, uh back issues uh screws in my neck and uh, uh lower back uh, condition so you know i had uh uh, been looking for a way to do my turning in a much more comfortable fashion. And uh, I know that, uh, you know, you can raise your lathe up uh, to a higher uh, height uh, and uh, relieve some of those back issues from leaning over. Um, but, uh, uh, or you can turn off the end of the lathe, or you could have a, a, a swivel lathe. And I sort of, uh, uh, zoomed in onto the uh, swivel idea as long as uh, that swivel was uh, locked down perfectly, okay? And so uh, th this is the machine. I I'll give you a few of the specs, and then, then I got some other uh, slides to show you. But um, it's uh, uh, 19 and a quarter inches uh, swing. So that's kind of a strange number. Uh, you know, we're, we're usually dealing with even numbers, but uh, uh, so it's uh, got enough swing to do uh, any of the bigger pieces that, that I want to, okay? Um, but it's a nice, short, compact machine. You get 23 inches of uh, uh, usable space uh, between tailstock centers. And, you know, I'm a, uh, I'm a bull guy. Uh, a vase person, uh, hollow forms. Okay, so I don't need a uh, a long lathe. Um, it just makes it, wanting to turn off the end of the lathe. Uh, just you just have to uh, uh, move that headstock further and further. So th this is a nice compact unit. Uh, like I say, 23 inches. Um, it no, no controls on the headstock. Everything's out of the pendant. So you got the, uh, the green button is the uh, start and the red's the stop, the black one is the reverse. And then uh, you've got your uh, uh, speed control dial, okay? And this is on a magnet and I can move that anywhere along the machine that I want, okay? Um, David, it also David, has- um, David, Dave, is yeah. that pendulum long enough to engage when you're, uh, when you're swiveled like that? Yeah, the cool oh, red? no, 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 no. You, you don't use the tail stock or cannot use the tail stock. I mean the tool rest. Oh yes, and I'll, uh, I've got a solution uh, uh, that I'll show you here in just a few minutes, okay? Cool. Um, cool. It also, you can stop it with the red button or you can uh, do the knee kick here, the red uh, uh, bar coming across here. I didn't know how much I would like it, but I'll tell you the truth, I, I probably use that knee kick at least half of the time to actually stop the machine. Okay. And so uh, I, I kind of like that feature. Is, uh, that, is that part of the machine or is that the cabinet? That's part of the cabinet. Good. Okay. The uh, controls uh, are behind this uh, uh, wall in the uh, uh, stand here. Okay, and then there's an open door here where you can get access to it. Okay, so 
it's a, a three-step pulley arrangement. I have my you know, one to one, one to th two, and one to three. I have mine on the one to three, which gives you 10 RPMs to 1200. I'll, I'll probably never uh, take it off of that. Then uh, you've got the uh, spindle lock, full-size hand wheel, which is nice. And then this black uh, thing here is a uh, safety lock uh, for what, if you wanted to uh, uh, lock your uh, um, uh, your uh, chuck uh, in the reverse, okay, and not have it come spinning off. I, I don't know that I'll ever use that, but there's a little bit better view of uh, uh, the backside, full-size hand wheel, a little better uh, look at the, uh, uh, spindle lock and then it has this uh, little spy hole here um, for uh, the indexing kind of short on the number of it there's only 24 on the uh, indexing so you can uh, but I have a Ali Sam uh, uh, disc so if I, I want to use that I, I, I can then um, we'll do this short video lock the handle and now we're set at 30 degrees a little bit of top side view of uh, what it looks like at 30 degrees then i can move it over to 60 degrees or at 90 90 degrees Okay. Does it have stops uh, at those places? Yes, yes. They're there, just like uh, in the video. There, there's a, there's three three different holes, and uh, 30, 60, and 90. So this is a different picture from the from their website. On the if you're doing 90 degrees, then you need to do uh, an outrigger there. And I don't know that I'll ever. I didn't get this. I don't know that I'll ever do that. Um, I think if I ever did. Uh, I'd probably look for an old powermatic type, uh, tripod type, uh, so that I could move it out of the way. I just think that would be in the way. Give you an idea, an end view of the stand. It's got a nice splay to it. The uh, uh, legs are independently adjustable, and it really sits on the floor nice in that uh, these uh, feet here are like over seven inches long. So it gives a good solid uh, support there. A little bit uh, better view of the overall machine. Uh, I did get the, uh, as you can see, the uh, bed extension with the swing away. And this just swings away uh, parallel to the bed. It doesn't drop out of the way, okay? And interesting, the way it uh, locks back into place, is you get this key fits in the keyway here that's good and oh. then there's a this threaded hole and i'll show you when you swing it back into place you've got this lever with it sticking out here that that locks it pretty pretty tight but you if you're wanting to use this as a bed extension and use the tailstock out here that, that threaded hole locks the tailstock into the base of the machine so it's just like it's rock solid okay would you swing that out with the tailstock mounted on it would it would it handle that oh yes oh yeah uh, i and i've got a picture of that in just a moment also now this is th these are the tool this is a tool rest comes with a 12 inch but the uh uh the post on it is a 30 millimeter it, it's it's substantial and so uh, uh, I, I really like this. This is uh, by far my favorite tool rest that I've ever used. Um, but then as an option, I got this other tool rest and this will explain to you, John, this is an offset tool rest. So I should, probably should have taken the, uh, uh, the 12 inch out of the way so you could see it, but it's eight inches to the left and 10 inches to the right. So, just in a uh, nice. closer view of the pendant. And this is a feature that I really like, it, this slow speed. It'll go down to, they say 10, but I, 
mine mine reads out at 11 so uh, I, I think i'll keep it i'm, I'm not going to turn it uh, return it because it doesn't go to 10. okay um but it comes with uh, uh a face plate a face plate branch and a, a life center dog and uh then the knockout bar that i put a uh, uh a sphere that i turn on the end of it how long did it take you to get it after you ordered it um five days nice so they're in stock in this country well th this was bought from uh, uh the canadian distributor nobody else in america brings this particular machine craft supply sells the the vl 300 which is a three horsepower um uh 24 inch swing okay um but <coughs> no, nobody's bringing in the uh since uh Woodworkers Emporium went out. Uh, nobody's bringing it in, so he had this in stock and it was ready, ready to deliver. So um, this is an adapter to the uh, uh, 30 millimeter, so I can use all my uh, other robust uh, uh, tool rests that I ever want to use. Okay, in uh, on the machine. Maybe I haven't discovered it yet, but a little bit short on the quill travel on the tailstock. It's only a little over three inches, but uh, I haven't found anything more than that current. Hang on a second. We've got somebody making a lot of noise. I don't know who it is. If I could find him, I'd mute him. So if if you who are doing it know who you are, please mute yourself. So, like I said, I've done maybe uh, 20 pieces, uh, a little bit more than that. I've done a number of uh, uh, medium size, larger size. I've done it uh, parallel to the uh, bedways uh, and uh, also uh, uh, tilted. So uh, uh, just to give you an idea, gives me an give you an idea of uh, the experience I have with the machine. Uh, this is a little bit bigger piece. This is like 16 inches uh, in diameter. Um, I finished off some uh, pieces. Of course, I have a with... question, Dave. Yeah. A, quick, a quick question. Two questions. One: um, Is the thread? Did you have to get a, an adapter to make it like a one by one by eight, one inch, or one and a quarter by eight inch thread for your chucks and stuff like that? Is... No, this is one one by bad. It comes that way. It's an uh, inch and a quarter by eight. It does come that way, okay. Yes, yes. And the second one, I'm assuming the Morris tapers is a, the two number two Morris taper on the on the tail stock. Is that correct? On both both the headstock and tail stock, yes. Well, thank you. So I, I've I've uh, cored with it, I've hollowed with it. There you there you can see the uh, John the uh, uh, tail stock is on the uh, I see extension swung out of the way. Yeah. Okay. Huh. And so I've done it every which way uh, except for one until I, I did a piece. I wanted to do one that was uh, entirely on the uh, uh, 30 degree angle uh, from beginning to end. OK, uh, so this was one of the uh, uh, I had done a bunch of uh, sycamore uh, crotches and I had seven or eight of them already done. And this was my last wet piece of wood. So I decided just to. Uh, scratch the uh, uh, the crotch piece and ju just do a, a, a regular bowl out of it. This was uh, 12 inches, uh, nothing fantastic, but uh, big enough to uh, put it through its paces. Nice so people. I uh, uh, take off the corners with the chainsaw, put it on the face plate ring, and then put it on the uh, machine and uh, that's the last it'll be at uh, 90 degrees until i take the foot off so we're going to start here i started out with this 12 inch tool rest and then uh the, here's your uh, offset once with the uh, 12 inch rest i was starting to get out towards the end of that rest at this point here i could have finished but i i just didn't want to run off the end of it so i i uh, stuck this one on and uh, uh, had no no problems at all. So this is really a slick idea. So just continuing to finish off the bowl, and always something has to go wrong. I uh, 
broke off two of the uh, screws, uh, taking the faceplate off. So I had to dig those out and just finishing off the ball. There's my uh, trusty little uh, expensive uh, uh, depth gauge there. And put it on the vacuum chuck and turn off, finish off the bottom. And then Don King, you know, the uh, famous boxing promoter, he used to have this saying called uh, only in America. Okay, so only in America could you be so darn lazy that you had to sit down uh, to do your sanding. Okay, so th this is really, really slick uh, with the head turn. Uh, it's kind of hard to get a little perspective here, but no, my we, face is... We see what's going face, on. That's very cool. Yeah, my face is uh, six inches away. So if there's any tool marks there or, or sanding scratch, I, I see them and I'm not bent over. So this is all about posture uh for me and comfort okay so this is this is the last slide and uh, uh this is one thing i, I didn't anticipate i kind of thought of it but I, I really didn't concern myself with it i have uh, drapes that prevent you know the shavings from getting all over the shop but when you turn that head 30 degrees uh the the trajectory of the chips that you're generating go in a different direction so i've uh messed up my uh uh grinding station with all kinds of debris and uh, so i've got i gotta uh fix that uh uh w with another drake but uh anyway that that's it okay end your slideshow or i will okay go ahead john you do it i think i can uh or i can just there got gotcha. you Gotcha. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to take the spotlight off you, and let's get for questions. Oh, you here. got the bowl. I'm going to put the here. You're on. Yeah, that's the bowl. The bowl I did. Uh, you know, remember uh, Ernie and Dave Hout? They were talking about just you know turn the bowl and let it go. Yeah. You know, no uh, no anchor seal, no anything. Um, but uh, th this is the way. This one warped about this sycamore about three quarters of an inch. Let's see the bottom of it. Okay, now hold it up so we can see the silhouette. Hold it sideways. Yep, 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 yep. Good, good. Okay, we can see the warp in there. We can see where the uh, pith of the tree was. Yep. Questions for Dave? I'd like to make an observation, if I may. Sure. I noticed, yeah. Dave, when you were turning your bowl and your tail stop was still on the uh, lathe, you had your live center in it. May I make a suggestion? You always remove that because we had a demonstrator who left it in and ended up in the hospital with 14 stitches where he'd gone back and caught that live center. I noticed it was still in your tail stop. The live center. The point of it? Yeah. Understood. Yeah, uh, I've made that mistake a bunch of times. I've got a permanent scar in my elbow from doing that many, many years ago. Yeah, uh, yeah. You only have to do that once. You'll never do it again. That's right. Yeah, I, I, I had that uh, worried about that. So what I did is I, I took a golf ball and I drilled the golf ball out. Um, uh, what is it? Three quarter and threaded it onto the point. And then I drilled a hole through the golf ball and tied a string on it. So it hangs on my tail stock with a long enough loop that every time I uh, take the tail, or not using the tail stock, I swing the golf ball up and jam it on the end of the tail stock. So it's an, and I have bumped my elbow against the golf ball. If I wouldn't have had it on there, I'm sure I'd have had stitches. Yeah. It's just a safety thing. Because, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. 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 It's something and I've done the same thing about. Put the golf ball on it. Yeah. 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 I learned that from Bert. Yeah. <laughs> I learned lots of stuff from Bert. <laughs> okay. Any more questions for Dave? Or comments for Dave? Yeah, he, he has another idea instead of the, the golf ball, um, just a little kind of cup thing turned from um, wood that yeah. I can put onto the live center. Oh, no, in this yeah. picture. Okay. That's so that works too. pretty nice as well. And I can also, I made it flat here, so I can also use to, it to support um, bowl bottoms or something like that. Yeah. 
So that's very my, useful. My problem with my wooden, I've got a whole bunch of those wooden ones, but they end up in a box. And then when I need them, I can never find them. The golf ball's got a string through it. So it's, it never goes anywhere, but on the handle, <laughs> it's always there. I can put a string on his and too. It's a conversation piece when people come to the shop and they're looking at my lathe and they're like, what the hell is a golf ball doing on your lathe? <laughs> you could try a magnet too. You wouldn't need a string then. Yeah. 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 Uh, Dave. Yeah. Uh, Dave. Yeah. You made a mention about uh, um, a dry pot uh, tool rest support. Yeah. And I and they said on the floor and in all inter, I thought they were a great idea. So on my bowl lathe I got one, and because I hold my wrench or uh, chisel in a low angle, coming up to the cutting when i got a catch that angle was enough to drive the tool rest into the work Ouch. and the outcome was not pleasant and so from that reason on i will not use a tripod tool rest unless it is mounted to the machine uh as a guide so that it doesn't move understood yeah that's a good uh Good idea. Yeah, the, the, the big mark outboard uh, tool rest is anchored to the frame, either on the 300 or the 250. It's actually physically bolted to the frame, which is, it, it helps with that. Well, just one last comment for, uh, from my side is uh, um, the machine, uh, as far as the swivel head idea, I can really tell the difference from my, in my back uh, about the, uh, uh, you know, after two or three hours uh, at the lathe, it, it does make a difference. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm ecstatic. I'm very, very happy. Very cool. I have one little question. How uh, noisy is the motor? Whisper quiet. Yeah. Uh, whisper. Yeah. That's, that's you get, great. You get, more, you get more noise from the fan of the VFD than you do from the motor, and you can barely hear the fan in the VFD. It's they're really quiet. Vic right. Mark did it right. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Very cool. Dave, you may have mentioned this and I may have missed it, but what lathe were you using before you got this Vic Mark? Uh, I I've had my my first big lathe was a Powermatic 3520B. Okay. <laughs> Through some health issues, I, I got rid of it, uh, and then uh, went with the uh, Grizzly uh, G0766, um, which I still have, and I have uh, no complaints with that machine, um, uh, other than I have to bend over, lean over a little bit. Okay, so I don't know what I'm going to do. I may sell it. I may I may keep it, but it's it's sitting here and. You know, so um, that's where I'm at right now. Great, thank you. Excellent overview. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, that was a good good show. I'm, I am going to move us along, however, because there are a bunch more guys with their hands up, and that was. But and I'll probably will extract that Dave as a separate video, like I like to do. Um, okay, I'm going to go. Wood shop. Thank God for wood. <laughs>